don't even have to worry about that. So <laughs> talk to us about this matchup. I mean, obviously, you, you're a little more familiar with Tyler. You yes. were just telling me off. Yeah, yeah. Damn. So, uh, you know, Tyler and I played together in a couple tournaments last month. We played at the Lakes, and we also had the opportunity to play at Centralia. We won the mixed doubles open division, beating uh, Tyson McGuffin and Irina Tereschenko, and then also beating the Newmans. So, um, we're doing a, a – sorry about that. Yeah, so right now he's on fire. He's playing really well. Uh, he has a lot of athleticism, and I feel like Colin does too. So this is going to be super, super exciting to watch. Yeah, and Michelle, yesterday, Colin Johns, who's about to play, was the participant of two mm -hmm. sudden death matches. Almost yesterday. one today too, right? Almost one. They, mm -hmm. That ball literally spun on the top of the net and then fell back on his side. Had that ball rolled over, who knows what would have happened. I know, I it, know. It was 9-8 with like three seconds left on the clock when that actually happened. But as viewers watching, doesn't that make for an amazing oh, viewership there? Absolutely. Uh, I'm here on the crowd sitting and watching in the bleachers, and I'm just like, oh, my God, what's, what's time going to do to this game? Because that's never been a variable okay, in our matches. Doing? So having it right now just makes it so cool, and I love it, and it's great. Absolutely. All right, so we've got... Colin Johns is ranked 37 in the world in singles right now in the GPR system. GPR, for anybody joining us, stands for Global Pickleball Rankings, okay? So one of the main reasons that this event is being put on is because they have come up with a ranking system within pickle pickleball that they really hope takes hold and gives us some validity to these um, rankings that we actually put out, meaning it's eight tournaments that they have talk with pros about zero, that they decided are part of the criteria and how how your results are in those will dictate your ranking in this gpr Point. and it's a rolling 52 week system so as the u.s open comes to One, conclusion zero. that will a previous tournament will fall off and the u.s open updates will come on yeah, Tyler coming out a little flat here, losing the serve and a point right off the bat. So let's see if he could get warmed up, get ready to go, get fired up like he usually does. No, I've watched Tyler Loom on a lot of YouTube videos. I've seen him at nationals. He's a very emotional player, meaning in a good way. He's very animated, very um, – he, he, he lets his emotions be raw. And, and the fans usually love Tyler Loon. Oh, yeah, and it's great. And that's why I get along with him so well as a mixed partner because we are both raw in that sense. So I just can't wait to see what they do here. I'm excited. Yeah, absolutely. And I remember watching the live stream at the Lakes that was recently going on mm -hmm. where you and him were both at. Mm -hmm. He was on a far court, and he wow. let out a yeah so loud. I could hear it on the live stream. So that's how intense Tyler is in a good way. Yeah, for some players, the intensity, um, when someone lets out an intense yell. Oh, there you go. That was a great point. Sorry, great point by both players there. But when someone lets out an intense yell, it kind of maybe irritates the opponent and gets in their head a little bit oh. mentally. So, um, But I think for Tyler, it comes out of just raw motion. Just that raw oh, motion. Oh, yeah. Which as fans, we love. I mean, who doesn't like to see it? Wow. Yeah, coming around there and wow. doing like a half Ernie, I guess you would say. <laughs> yeah, that would be like a half Ernie, but that was also weird to see because it was his left, left hand. hand. Yeah. So it was kind of, he had to contort a little bit to come One, outside of mm -hmm. the Novali zone. You see uh, Tyler running around his backhand a lot, using that forehand, trying to get that rip down uh, Colin's forehand side. And this is also an interesting matchup because even though Tyler's left-handed, He's very athletic, can go side to side mm -hmm. as good as anybody in this game. Also, Colin can switch hands and hit a drive or a drop shot with Three his left more. hand. He played professional tennis like that, or still does, I believe. Mm -hmm. Played professional tennis with both hands. So essentially, he has two forehands. That's so cool. What great points by both players right now. I didn't know Colin had that. And so now watching it, I'm going to look out for that and see how he utilizes it to his advantage. Absolutely. So an early lead for Team East here with Colin. Colin has had great success in this tournament so far to date. We're only a 
first session in the day two. Mm -hmm. But so far, he's been a part of some exciting matches. Obviously, Tyler um, was not playing yesterday. Ooh, what a rip. Yeah, nice cross-court forehand rip by Tyler Loom. Yeah, I mean, Colin is just playing so well. And even yesterday, he was playing great. I mean, we, we nicknamed him the sudden death, sudden sudden death, death guy. Johns, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Sudden yeah. death Johns. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> But, you know, at the U.S. Open, there won't be a clock, so we will have to get him a new nickname. I know. <laughs> but for this tournament right here, this event, he will be Sudden Death Johns. <laughs> but, but, again, go back to Tyler real quick on this with the left-handed versus the right-handed. What would normally be a backhand shot is, is a forehand when you go back across this way. So what, what I'm really, I think, saying, Michelle, is mm -hmm. the lefties – create a little bit of problems for somebody who's used to playing against right-handed players. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're a good enough player, you'll be able to like switch it around and kind of recognize different patterns and how you have to go against a left-handed player. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had those moments, though, in a doubles game where you realize you, you hit a shot that you're used to hitting against a right-hander, and all of a sudden they put a forehand away, and you go, crap, I just, I just had a moment of you know, forgetfulness about it. Well, it's fun because uh, I usually pair up with left-handers. So I've paired Watch up with Tyler Luke. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, it's just... The cat and mouse game. That's like cat and mouse. And, yeah. and that also could showcase uh, Tyler's ability to go side, side to, to side. side. Better than anybody I've ever seen. So probably. incredible. Left-handed. That's left right. So, yeah, I usually like to pair up a, with a left-handed partner just because I don't like being against that. <laughs> so wow. it's a, it's kind of uh, scary when you have two forehands in the middle. So um, for singles, it's a little different because you only see that one player. Oh, so, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tyler with the point now. He was stuck on two for quite a bit of time there. But again, we need to keep emphasizing this, I think, because it's important to note that anybody joining us, you're not watching a traditional format of pickleball. This is working against your opponent, but also working against a clock. Exactly. You have you have two things going on, and that's a little overwhelming for us players. I don't know. If, I think we're handling it really well, uh, well right I now. I would agree 100%. <laughs> and it's exciting for everyone, so... Not only for the viewers, it's exciting for us too. <laughs> Absolutely, and, and to be honest, get by um, Tyler Lou. Yeah. Oh, Colin goes behind him for a winner. What a great shot! Nice playing. So it looked like to me that that Tyler thought he was going to go down the line. Oh yeah, he this was way. he was hustling. He was hustling, and Colin saw that, so he went right behind him. Great play by Colin. How much of a factor does fatigue start to play a role late in a game in singles? Late? I think it, it starts early. <laughs> it starts early, and then maybe the points start. At times, I felt like maybe the upper hand early was somebody that was fresh, and then they start to fatigue some. And then that gap kind of grows based on some unforced errors. I mean, it starts to play a real factor, right? Oh, absolutely. And that's where a timeout is, like, really crucial. Okay, so I see Tyler Loom going over to Colin's forehand side a lot, and that's where he's been going to his backhand side, rolling, uh, Colin's rolling the forehand over to Tyler's and backhand side. And hitting some clean winners. hitting some clean winners. So I want to see uh, Tyler actually going to his backhand a little bit more, maybe opening up the court on the first uh, return, maybe, and then going over to Colin's backhand side. Just because I've seen the pattern a couple times already, and Colin's been so successful at it. Absolutely. So there, right there you saw him go try to attempt to hit a return to the back end, but Colin running around that return to hit a forehand drive, mm -hmm. and it worked out for him there. So 9-5. The gap has just increased by four here. But one thing to note about Tyler, he's never out of a point, and he's never out of a game. Look at that athleticism. Colin just does not give up during the point. I love and he's it. able to put that ball right back into the kitchen. Drop shot Ernie. Wow. <laughs> drop shot Ernie. Just witness a drop shot Ernie. That's right pretty there. impressive right there. Only Tyler Loon could do that shot, I feel like. Oh, my gosh. I think he's the only one I've ever seen do a drop shot Ernie like that. I've seen him do it against me, and that kind of sucked. <laughs> so he's known for kind of doing that shot there. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, Tyler goes for a big cross court but misses it wide. Does he do that shot sometimes where he takes that quick, short, two-handed backhand like that and rips it? Yeah, he just added that uh, two-hander recently. So he actually had an article in Pickleball Magazine about it last month. Wow. That two-handed backhand. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, I do remember seeing that. Oh, there okay, you go. There you go. go. Tyler's being a little bit more aggressive. Not not playing the cat and mouse game, but being a little bit more aggressive with it and um, trying to put a ball away right away instead of moving it around. I like that. Okay, there you go. Tyler went around the, the backhand to hit a forehand there. 
Okay. Tyler's okay. trying to find the new strategy right now. He's yep. trying to find a new strategy. He hasn't been able to successfully do it. Nine but nine. I think he's he knows that he, that's what needs to happen right now. And honestly, we're not even to the halfway point. We're right at about 11 and a half minutes mm -hmm. left. So there's so, so much time left, especially in singles. Mm -hmm. Because you just need that one side out. Exactly. How quickly can, can momentum change in singles? I think in singles or in doubles, momentum could change so quick. Like one random shot or one random play could change everything. And it's all about momentum. And it's all about if you're feeling like some plays and if you're able to create them over and over and feel comfortable and consistent enough. So momentum plays a huge role in the game. Oh, there goes that cross court to the forehand. That usually gets him in trouble. Look at the hustle there. Yeah. But see, again, he's go still going to the forehand of yeah. Colin. I don't he, know if he realizes that. He may not. And sometimes, we I want to be clear on this. Sometimes we, it looks. Up here, right? Maybe that was the only shot that he had. Um, but also, maybe Tyler Lung's a little stubborn in the sense that he wants to get it. <laughs> that could be true, too. You know him better than I do. Again, he's going to that forehand again. And, and I know. That, that cost him right there. We might need to see a timeout. I here know. Soon. I know. The gaps increased by six now. And and I will I say know. that I've seen some stubbornness in some mm -hmm. of the players. You Not know, you know, you want to get through a wall, right? right? And then I think that's what maybe Tyler's thinking right now. I want to get through this wall. I want to get points off of this. Like that right there. That could be a good oh, momentum right. change. That's for him. exactly right. He found his backhand there. So let's see what happens. All right, so so what's going on right now? She said side change at the 10 minute mark, mm -hmm. right? So it has nothing to do with score, correct? It has nothing to do with score. So it's 11 6. So in a traditional see, game, see, look at this, this though. Look at this though. Tyler is just rushing into the next point, not taking his time. Yeah. Maybe that's something else that, you know, we sh he should consider in his singles is just slowing down a little bit. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath and try something new because there he goes to his forehand again. He keeps going mm -hmm. back to that forehand. No. The second one, he may have only had that option, but the first one, he chose to hit that exactly. to the forehand. Exactly. So we're kind of seeing what you're talking about played out as a repetitive theme at the moment. Let's see if Ty Tyler can make some adjustments here. No. Billy, he just keeps going back to that. I right know. And Colin keeps crushing him. <laughs> and, and honestly, he keeps winning that battle right now. Yep. So is it stubbornness or is it? I think it's well, stubborn at this point. <laughs> no, I, I think I really do. I think he's just stubborn enough to keep trying it. But I love that about Tyler. It's yeah. like he's gonna he's gonna figure it out one way or he's another. He's gonna so. get it figured out. Yep. And again, it's twelve six. But guys, understand at nine minutes left in this match, it is completely available to Tyler to come back and win this game. Now, he, he may have to change some strategies, right? Absolutely. He needs to change his strategy because what's happening right now is not working. Also, um, Tyler's having to run a lot right now. He's actually having to work very hard for these points. And I also feel like Tyler's return of serve for right now is a little short. Maybe he could do a little bit more with that. Talk, talk about how oh, important oh, okay. that return is in doubles and singles, but especially in singles, how that can dictate. Oh, it dictates the whole point. It dictates the whole point because if you're coming in on a short ball, you don't have enough time to get up to the net after you return. So um, also, if it's a little deeper, then you're able to come in a little bit faster behind it. Okay. So um, that's another thing. Also, I see Tyler slicing the ball, keep trying to keep it low to Collins. Uh, I, well, the last one I saw was his backhand, but trying to keep it low creates a ball to be hit up. So that's, ah, I think that's okay. what he's looking for, but... Uh, Colin's doing such a good job at dropping it into the kitchen, getting up there, wow. and playing the cat and mouse game. Look at that shot right there. Did you see that? That was an inverted backhand Ernie. It uh -huh. was like, I think, I believe, Joey Farias told, it, told us that was called a, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm, it's slipping my mind right now. We'll get Joey at some point to tell us what that was, but he called it a Belgian <laughs> something. He had a name for it, Michelle. Well, we got to figure out what that is because that's awesome. I didn't know it had a name. Yeah, he called it a Belgium something. And that's the first time in, in, in the history of my two years playing <laughs> that I've ever heard that term. Yeah, I thought it just kind of looked funny because it was Tyler's backhand and it's left-handed. So it, that's why I thought it was a little off. But it, you're right, it was a little inverted in the, in the sense of his paddle angle. Right, and he kind of just slapped it like almost like a pop shot, you know. <laughs> he didn't have like a lot of roll or top spin. It was just a boom. Mm -hmm. 6.13. One thing I think would be good to note here is that um, coming under seven minutes 
And fatigue will start to play a factor here. Mm -hmm. And then the time starts to play a factor. So we're going to see if Tyler can stay composed, stay under control, and then work his way back in one point at a time. Oh, okay. Well, Tyler was trying to get that cross court to his backhand, but I just think he's not finding that side. I think his he's only finding it to his forehand side, so maybe that's why he kept going there. And that, that could be what it is. I mean, mm -hmm. you know better than anybody as a player what your body's doing at that moment. Exactly. So, so he may feel like his cross court roll. Wow, that is so impressive to watch that. And he, he continuously does it over and over. It's, isn't it crazy? He's he so can consistent. Jump so quick on it. <laughs> His he reads it so early. And his strides are very long, so it's like one or two steps. There it is. Oh, he Tyler. He <laughs> just found it. Uh, Tyler just threw his hands up like, there it is. <laughs> so he may have just found his Seven, key four, to eight. unlock this game right here. Too bad time is a factor, huh? Yeah, and you know. Because now, look, I feel like he's finding his ground strokes. I feel like he found his forehand right now. And uh, too bad there's only like eight, five four, minutes eight. left. But you know, you Still never know. You never know. One big mental aspect of this is... Right now, Tyler's opponent is in double-digit figures, right? And he's in single digits. But if he can get to the milestone of double digits, meaning 10, right? Like that. Around okay. the post. There, that's a great shot right there by Tyler. So, so big. Now. So big. Yeah, so now it's 914. I feel Tyler found some mojo. He's pushing. And he is going now. He is running. 914. And don't think for one minute that Colin doesn't sense that pressure too now. Mm -hmm. Because all of a sudden, okay. Okay, he just missed that wide. I was not sure at first, but it was called wide. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's nothing to panic right now. It's just that five-minute mark. we mm -hmm. got five minutes to play out here. Tyler needs one stop to get this ball back. He's got – clearly has the momentum coming under five minutes. Let's see what Colin does at this point to change that. Trying to go to his backhand now. Mm -hmm. So he, Colin just pushed a little hard maybe right there to try to go to his backhand. Maybe forced it just a tad. Let's see what this next point is crucial. I feel like this is Absolutely. a crucial part. Oh yes, he's nice finding get it. Colin going to his backhand. Oh okay, yeah, it's there though. Mm -hmm. It's, it's there. there. Mm -hmm. So he's on to it now. You know, he either read our mind, <laughs> he either finally gave up the stubborn will, or he just started feeling that shot all of a sudden and start. It started to go through. It's a, it's kind of like understanding when it's like an aha moment for some players. Does that make sense? Yeah, you see that light bulb kind of turn mm -hmm. on in the middle of a game. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in the middle of a point. Again. Again. Yeah. Yep, good energy by Tyler Loon. Definitely still in it, not giving up, um, showing his athleticism. And now, listen, he's going to start picking the pace up a little here. You're gonna see it. Oh, man. That's a that's t that's tough for a for a ball that you drive from the baseline to hit that top of the net cord and not roll over for I you. I know. And Tyler looked back Four at the line nine. like, oh, was that in or was that out? He wasn't too sure, but um, yeah, that's a great return by Colin. Yeah, and also keep in mind this is Tyler's first comp. No, second. He did play doubles oh, yeah. early, right? Oh yes, I believe yes, he played. Christine. He played the very first opening round of mm -hmm. this first session, and he's closing out the second to last session so this is only his second time playing under the clock mm -hmm. and for that, you guys that's yesterday a great point. that's a great point um he's still trying to kind of figure out this format yeah there's his forehand rip oh there it is okay oh. he's finding it so what you were talking about early is starting to kind of play out now he's finding that that rhythm to his back to colin's back exactly 10, 14. finding something new still a ton of time left guys Oh, what a get by Colin and what a get by Tyler. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's gosh. so athletic right there. Oh, my gosh. It was a backhand flip overhead angle out wide. So good, you guys. Great playing by both players. Could I go as far to say that was a twirly bird? That was a twirly bird. <laughs> Clean winner right there by Tyler Lou. Ooh, I think he's pushing just a little much. He feels, again, this I think is what we're talking about. You just feel a sense of urgency when you're down late in this match, under three minutes. You can feel it. But you know what? He's only down by three points now. Oh, wow. You're right. It's 14-11. Yeah. Okay, finding his backhand. Ah, okay. that's a good point right. by Colin right. right there. Colin able to get to Tyler's backhand there. Yep. Yeah, that was good play. 15, nice work. 11. It's still very doable to have a comeback here. And the reason I want to be very clear on this too, Michelle, for anybody watching, it's not that we're siding with Tyler. It's just as a viewer, you want to see a close game down to exactly, the wire. Exactly. So, so we're, we're, I'm neutral. You're neutral. 
with commentary, but as viewers, as commentators, what? I think it makes the match that much more intense well, and, and exciting. Right now, I think it's pretty exciting. Tyler's oh, down three points, finding his finding his game. I think oh, he's oh, seeing oh, backhand, backhand. Oh my gosh! Look, there what is. a point! Finally, oh my gosh! Finally, after three to four times of trying that shot, he finally got it. That was such a big, crucial point by both players. All right, so we're coming down to almost the. We're right at one minute and fifteen seconds here. Okay. So right now, okay. So you just hit that ball just long, mm -hmm. but there's no need to panic, right, Michelle? There's no need to panic 15, at this point. 15. He's only down two. Wow. There it goes. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, that's. that's, that's he w he went back to the forehand again. I wish he would have stayed away from. That. You know, and and he knows that at this point. It, it, oh. It's it's. 19 minutes in and he did start to figure that out now but okay oh, so that's so unfortunate but you know what's going on again it's the it has to do with 17, the time 13. they start to feel a little more pressure oh I, my oh oh he gets it back he did pl he did oh, plan for that man. one a little better that time okay so C congratulations and kudos to Co uh, Colin Johns for staying composed mm -hmm. through that massive run. Yes, absolutely. Up with. Don't yes. forget, Colin also had to figure out the new plays, and he handled that greatly. He and really did adjust well. And didn't he? I, you know what? I love this match. This was such a sweet match, even though right here at the end, down by six. Um, down by six at the end. It was so good. Both players showed some incredible shots. So I love it. Grit and, and, and uh, heart down to the... Alright guys, we just had the completion of a singles match. This was the second to last match before we end our first session. Colin, that was fun to watch because there, there was not just a ton of athleticism, but there's a lot of gamesmanship and, and chess match going back and forth. Um, talk to us about what you guys were doing right there with that cat and mouse and, and chess match there. Uh, yeah, obviously when you play Tyler, who's a really good athlete, really fast, uh, there are a lot of athletic points, long points. A lot of play at the kitchen line, so uh, it's definitely a fun one, and uh, I was lucky enough to come out on top. What did you do down the stretch right there when he was making that big push to try to stay composed and then just hold on for that finish there? Yeah, I knew he had to rush a little bit to, to catch up. I, I did have a pretty good lead, um, but with that last bit, that, that, that uh, last push that he made, um, I felt like I just needed to get the, the ball back one or two more times, and if I could score a point on my serve, then I felt like I was going to secure it. But he definitely made a real good push there at the end. That's awesome. It was a lot of fun to watch. Thanks so much, Colin. Thank you. All right, we've got Tyler Loon coming up right here. Tyler's making his way over right here now. We've got just a short bit of time to, um, to get this interview real quick. Hey, congratulations on that, man. A hard-fought battle. Yep. One thing I wanted to kind of focus and talk with you about is th this is only your second time to play under that clock. What does that feel like when you're down maybe two points? I think it was right at a minute left. You were down 15-13. Talk to the people watching what that feels like to be under that pressure. Yeah, I mean, it's a different situation. Uh, you don't really prepare for it unless you're playing one of these events. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot more pressure on it. Every single shot you hit, uh, it counts. Um, and you really got to be focused because one or two points here and there can really change the whole, the whole situation. Also, I wanted to, one of the themes that we kept seeing play, playing out there was early you were going to Colin's forehand a lot. And he was honestly beating you on those forehands when you were going to that side. Late, though, you made that big push. It looked like you started going back to the backhand. Yeah, I mean, Colin's a great player, and so he adjusted uh, very well. Uh, but, yeah, I was trying to focus on his backhand a little bit more. I was seeing a few more uh, free points from there, and so um, I was trying to do that, but he obviously adjusted. Awesome. Congratulations, man. Good luck on the next round. And uh